Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video in bonding, so let's get moving. Bam! So today we're talking about drawing structural isomers. Okay, structural isomers have the same formula, but a different physical arrangement of the atoms. Therefore, different IUPAC names. The IUPAC names are the International Union of Peer and Applied Chemistry, and they set the rules and guidelines as far as naming of any compound in chemistry. Okay, so we're going to draw three different Lewis structure, structures for C2, H2, Cl2. There are no resonant structures. These are structural isomers. Okay, no resonant structures. They are structural isomers. We're going to determine, after we draw the Lewis dot structure of each, we're going to determine the molecular geometry, the hybridization of each one, the bond angles, the polarity. Okay, so let's get moving here. Now again, you're going to have to look at that, that uh, formula, C2H2Cl2, find the number of total valence electrons and add them up. Okay, and then from there, you're going to have to figure out a Lewis dot structure. The least electronegative, but never hydrogen goes in the middle. So it has to be a carbon that goes in the middle. And you're going to find out that carbon must have an octet. Since carbon must have an octet, it cannot bond more than four things. Therefore, you're going to have to expand this into having two different carbons of similar. Okay, so hopefully you understand that that central carbon cannot bond four things because it must obey the octet rule and therefore you're going to have to branch this off, in other words. Okay, so here is one of the structures here. And I'm going to show this to you here as well. So it's two carbons. The black things here are carbons. Okay, it has a double bond. That is a sigma and a pi. So there's one sigma, one pi. It's a double bond. There is no rotation around this bond. Unlike this single bond, there is a rotation, but there's no rotation around the double bond because the pi bonds above and below the sigma bond inhibit rotation around the molecule. That allows us to have a structural isomer in this case. Okay, and then these two green things are the chlorines. These two white things here are the hydrogens. There's three sets of lone pairs on each of the chlorines. This is one of the structural isomers. So it's C2H2Cl2. Okay. Another one of the structural isomers is the following. So a structural isomer is the same formula, but a physical arrangement of the atoms that is different. So what we're doing is actually plucking out this, removing it, removing this, and placing them in new locations. So this next one here looks just like this. I got the chlorines on the bottom, the hydrogens here on the top. It, again, just like the previous structure, has a double bond, so it inhibits rotation. That is key to these structures. Okay, now I want to point out another thing about the first structure here. This is what the first one looked like. If you were to draw this structure, it is the same, because all I've done is move, twist the molecule. It is still the same structure no matter what. Okay, so the left-hand structure, whether you draw the cloins on the right or whether you draw the cloins on the left, it is the same structure. Those are not resonant structures. That is not a different isomer. An isomer is a physical arrangement of the atoms which is different. So that's why this structure here, so you should see that this is the one that is the chlorines on the bottom. Even if you drew the chlorines on the top, that's actually the same thing. But I'm going to show you both of these, the one on the left and the one on the right, and those correspond here to the structures of which are on the slide so far. Now, the next structure, the next uh, structural isomer here um, is, an, again, you're going to remove one of the chlorines, remove one of the hydrogens, and put them in different locations of which do not make these two actually the same. And here is the next one. Okay, this next one looks just like this right here. Okay, and you should see that the um, chlorines are opposite each other. Now, if you drew it like this, that's actually the same thing. Drew it like that, it's the same thing. Drew it like this, this. They're all the same thing. They Again, they have that double bond, so they inhibit rotation. That is actually key to this. Okay, there are actually different names for each one of these. And the one on the far left is called a cis-like structure. Cis is same side. So this is cis, that means the chlorines are on the same side, or the hydrogens are on the same side, so that is cis. 
okay? The middle structure is also a cis type structure. That is, the chlorines are on the same side. The hydrogens are on the same side. That is cis. However, the far right hand structure is called trans, like transcontinental railroad. That's across. So they're across each other or across each other. Across is trans. So trans structures are different. So it doesn't matter which of these structural isomers you look at, okay, the molecular geometry around each carbon is going to be the same. Doesn't matter which one of these, and you have two different carbons, but the molecular geometry around each carbon is the same. So we're just going to do one of them, and it doesn't matter which one. So the molecular geometry around each carbon is certainly the same here, and that is AX3. Okay, that corresponds to something that is three bonding regions and no non-bonding regions, which is, of course, trigonal planar, and the bond angle is 120. So that means that any one of these three structures around this carbon or around this carbon is AX3, which is trigonal planar. Okay, and you should see that, that it is trigonal planar. That is one, one, two, and three regions. Or if I look at this carbon, one, two, and three regions. So that is trigonal planar. Okay, now all of them are sp2 hybridous around that particular carbon. Again, around this carbon, sp1, p2, or around this carbon, sp1, p2. And I've been looking at that trans structure those last couple of times, so let's look at one of the cis-like structures, sp1, p2, at this one, sp1, p2. Okay, it is also trigonal planar, that is one, two, and three regions. This bond angle, 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 and this bond angle are all 120 degrees. Okay, now, now the molecular dipoles. So this is the molecule dipole here, not the bond dipole, but the whole molecule dipole. So if you look at that far left-hand structure, you should see that you should be able to draw a molecular dipole like that. That lets you know that this molecule is either polar or nonpolar. So I'm going to show you that here. That's this molecule right here. So there's a bond polarity here, bond polarity here, bond polarity here, bond polarity here. So the molecule dipole is going in this direction. That is, the more electronegative elements are over here. That makes this molecule asymmetric and, of course, polar, which we're going to write that down in just a second. Okay, the next one here, the molecular dipole is like that. So that is the, the atom, the bonding dipole, bonding dipole, bonding dipole, bonding dipole, and they sum up so it looks just like that. So this is asymmetric also. This region is different than this region over here, and that molecule is going to be polar. I'm going to write that down in just a second. Then this next one here has no net molecular dipole. So that is this structure. Again, just this is the trans-like structure. And so there's a bond dipole going in that direction, bond dipole going in that direction, and they are equal and opposite. So they're pulling equal and opposite. Then this bond dipole goes in this direction, this bond dipole goes in that direction, and they push and they equal and um, together in the same region. So therefore, this is symmetrical in terms of the, there's no net molecular dipole. That one makes this nonpolar. So we're going to write all those down there for you. That first molecule is polar, this second one is polar, and then we have a nonpolar molecule. Okay, so trans-like structures, the one on the far right, are the most stable-like structures because that means that those big atoms of the chlorine are as far away as possible, okay? And that inhibits steric hindrance issues, okay? The other two structures are certainly polar, and the trans-like structure is certainly non-polar, okay? So that is another crazy hat video, and I got a crazy hat, one of the greatest hats here, and... I love you. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'm going to see you next time for more cool chemistry videos. Bye now.